we sent Real Life's Timis Delos to Fall River, Massachusetts for the spooky details. We're, we're afraid. We thought a crazed man was on the loose. It was a brutal murder. A murder that created a sensation in the genteel Victorian era city of Fall River, Massachusetts. And the prime suspect in the case became an infamous American legend. Her name was Lizzie Borden. The fact that she was a woman and that a woman was perceived to have gotten away with murder, the fact that the crime was so brutal and that a woman would even be thought of having committed such a brutal crime. I think that fascinates people. The morning of August 4th, 1892 began pretty much the same as any other in the Borden home during that hot summer. Andrew Borden was at work at his job as president of the local bank, and Lizzie's sister Emma was out of town on a pleasure trip. That morning, their stepmother Abby instructed the housekeeper, Bridget Sullivan, to wash the first floor windows of the home. In the meantime, just after 9 a.m., Abby went upstairs to remake the beds and change the linens in the guest bedroom. It was the last time anyone would ever see her alive. Just before 11 o'clock, Andrew Borden arrived home earlier than usual from the bank, and he took the back stairs to briefly go up to his bedroom. A few minutes later, he returned to the sitting room and stretched out on the sofa to take a nap before lunch he never noticed the attacker come up from behind him, and he probably never knew what hit him. About 11.30, Bridget heard Lizzie shouting for her to come quick to the sitting room. She said someone had killed father. Police and neighbors arrived on the scene to witness a gruesome sight. Andrew Borden was still stretched out on the sofa. His head had been shattered into an almost unrecognizable pulp. Meanwhile, Bridget and a next-door neighbor went upstairs looking for Mrs. Borden. When they got to the top of the stairs, they didn't have to look far. From under the bed, they could see Abby Borden's dead body. The murder weapon actually was never found and never proven to be an axe, although an axe they did find in the cellar actually matched the wounds on Andrew and Abby Borden's head. But they couldn't prove scientifically at that time that that was indeed the murder weapon. Police may not have had a murder weapon, but they did have a suspect. It was no secret Lizzie hated her stepmother. And the cops were skeptical of Lizzie's alibi that she was in the barn eating pears when the murders took place. In 1893, after months of sensational headlines about the crime, Lizzie Borden went on trial for the murders of her father and stepmother. But after only 10 days of gruesome testimony and evidence, the jury found Lizzie Borden not guilty. The fact of the matter is they had no evidence, they had circumstantial evidence. They had no weapon, they, uh, they had no motive, they had, uh, they had nothing. Now even though the murders took place inside this home over a hundred years ago, today thousands of people are still absolutely fascinated by the Lizzie Borden case. And would you believe some of those folks are actually willing to spend money to sleep inside this place overnight? Well, it's true. You might say it's sort of a bed and breakfast with the Bordens. I think it's going to be exciting. <laughs> I don't know whether we're going to, you know, be able to sleep tonight. My sister's really concerned about that. We're dying to get in here. Just dying to see what it looked like. That's, that's maybe the wrong choice of words. Wow. <laughs> Actually, the bed and breakfast was my partner Ron's idea. Mm -hmm. I was just going to do the museum tour type thing, and he thought that people would want to spend the night in the house, be able to stay in the actual rooms where the murders took place. What do you think is the allure of staying in the house where the Lizzie Borden murders took place? It's the mystery of it. Lizzie was acquitted in 1893 of the murders. It's unsolved for 104 years. Mm -hmm. Still a mystery. Until recently, the old Borden home has never been open to the public. But five years ago, McGinn and Evans inherited the 14-room building from McGinn's grandmother, and they painstakingly renovated the old place. They even worked with old police photos to recreate the interior just as it was the day of the crime. This is the guest bedroom where mm -hmm. Abby was found murdered. Do you get a lot of people who want to stay in this room? I mean, I heard there's a guy who wants to sleep 
right here in the murder spot. Is that true? Actually, this is our most requested room. If you wanted to stay here on a Friday or Saturday evening, you'd have to be booked into next year. And this is the spot where Andrew Borden um, was administered eight, 11 blows to the head with a heavy blunt instrument. Do people get a little nervous sitting on this thing sometimes? <laughs> well, at night, when it's pretty dark and quiet in here, uh, guests will sit here and there, but it's the brave soul that will sit here in this spot. And plenty of Lizzie Borden buffs are brave enough to do just that and more. Do you have any problems, you know, being close to some of the very spots where the murders took place? Oh, no. 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 I wouldn't be here if we did. This no, is exciting for you. Yes. You're loving yes, this. Sure. These folks are loving this. <laughs> they hope to get spooked. I think that's, they, they're coming here for an experience. They want to hear a door open. They want to hear a noise. They want to hear footsteps. And I think if they don't uh, hear, you know, something, they're disappointed. This, of course, is the murder room. And right over here is the spot where Lizzie Borden's stepmother was murdered. And right next to it, of course, is the bed I'm going to be sleeping in all night. Why am I doing this? Okay, I guess it's time to go to bed now. I got everything I need. I got my toothbrush. I got my trusty flashlight. Somebody told me I might need this. After all, it's going to be a long night. You never know what could happen. Lizzie could show up. Good night. I thought some cookies and milk would help me sleep. Aren't they cute? Axe cookies. Get it? Axe cookies. Oh, really? Gee, I wonder what happened to Tim. Now, the Lizzie Borden house is really a fully functioning bed and breakfast that opened officially just a few weeks ago, ironically enough, on the 104th anniversary of the murders. And by the way, on opening day, a couple actually got married in the house spent their honeymoon night in the bedroom where Abby Borden was murdered. Can you believe that? Why? <laughs> I have no idea. Really? What was it like for you, Tim? It was a little spooky at night. During the day, it's a pretty charming Victorian era bed and breakfast, but at night it takes on a whole different feel. Now, we didn't see Lizzie. I'm creeped out just listening. We didn't see Lizzie, but we did hear a few bumps and noises that night. And as hard as we tried, we couldn't keep our bedroom door open. You know, there was a reason what for that. What do you that. mean? It kept closing. It kept closing by itself. 